Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, April 25th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. For about two hours on Tuesday, IP addresses assigned to Amazon were redirected to Enet, a larger ISP in Columbus, Ohio. Now, first of all, how did this happen? Well, uh, for five different prefixes owned by Amazon, BGP announcements were issued by this ISP in Columbus, and that of course then caused some ISPs around the internet to actually obey these announcements and redirect traffic to these five prefixes to this particular ISP. Now, these BGP hijack attacks are actually somewhat common, but typically they go unnoticed. What sort of caused this one to be noticed is that the prefixes being redirected here were part of Amazon's Route 53 DNS service. One symptom that sort of caused this to be noticed was that users of Google's DNS server 8.8.8.8 were no longer able to resolve some host names that were hosted by Amazon's Route 53. In the end, it turned out that the redirect actually did affect at least one website. So this was not just an accidental misconfiguration. We had that happen too in the past, but myetherwallet.com was redirected to a malicious site. So if during that time you did look up the IP address for myetherwallet.com, you got a bad response back and that then redirected you to essentially a phishing site. However, the attacker was missing one very important piece and that was a valid SL certificate. The SL certificate that was presented by the fake site wasn't correct, so users should have gotten a warning. Now, different ISPs are more or less open in what kind of announcements they're accepting, so this didn't affect everybody out on the internet, but apparently some large ISPs did actually accept this malicious advertisement and routed traffic to the wrong system. And then we got updates from Apple for iOS and for Mac OS. There are only four different vulnerabilities that are being addressed by this update. Two vulnerabilities in WebKit, and those are probably the interesting ones because they can actually lead to remote code execution if a user visits a malicious website. In addition, there are two vulnerabilities in Mac OS and iOS, one in the crash reporter that could allow for approach escalation and then a link spoofing vulnerability where a link doesn't actually correctly represent what website a user is visiting. In addition to the updates for iOS and macOS, Apple also released an update for Safari. That update just contains the WebKit fixes and it also applies to older versions of OS X and Mac OS. I haven't seen anything yet for iOS or tvOS. They're probably also affected by the WebKit issues and Typically, Apple does release updates for all of its operating systems in a case like this, but maybe given the small number of vulnerabilities actually being fixed here, they haven't released them yet. And Microtik today released a firmware update for its routers only a day after a new exploit tool was spotted that exploited a so far unknown vulnerability in Microtik. This vulnerability abuses the Winbox service. It's listening on port 8291 and is sort of a Microtik specific protocol that is used to administer routers remotely. The vulnerability essentially allowed the attacker to download the user database from the router. So what typically happened is the router connected to the Winbox port, downloaded that user list, then came back, logged in and made modifications to the device. 
We haven't really seen widespread exploitation of this. If anything, this month was actually kind of quiet as far as scans for port 8291 goes. And so far, only one IP address was seen using this specific exploit. And if you haven't noticed yet, in May, May 20th to 25th, I'll be teaching our Defending Web Application class in Reston, Virginia. As part of this event, I'll also be giving an evening talk that's open to the public. It's actually sort of a joint event with the local OWASP chapter. I'll be speaking about quite a bit of the things that we're doing here with the Internet Storm Center. The title of the talk is Nation State Level Honeypotting emulating vulnerable web applications at scale. And if you're interested in participating in Internet Storm Center more, setting up your own sensor, or if you're just interested in hearing how it all works, the evening session is free, it's open to the public. We only require that you please register on the SANS website. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.